There are many camps of thought when it comes to how to perform the squat. And the more you read about squat form, the more likely you are to find conflicting information, particularly on the topic of squat depth, which is one of the most controversial and debated topics in the realm of weightlifting. On one side, you have the purists who will tell you that you must squat ass to grass. At the opposite end of the spectrum are the overly cautious types who worry that squatting too low will damage your knees. The question is who's right? Is it safe to squat deep? And is squat depth that important for muscle growth? In this video, which is the third of my squat series, I'm going to address all these questions to help you find your optimal squat depth that will maximize effectiveness and safety of your squat. Coming up. Many lifters believe the myth that deep squats can injure their knees. Thanks to the advancement in exercise science and biomechanics research, this has been debunked by many studies, among which was a thorough meta-analysis published in 2013 and included more than 164 articles. The study concluded that when compared with half and quarter squats, deep squat caused lower knee joint and spinal joint stress and hence posed no serious risk to the knees or spine in the long term. In fact, deep squat was proven to be effective in protecting against injuries and in strengthening of the lower extremity. According to a 2013 study from the European Journal of Applied Physiology, where 17 young men trained either deep squats at 120 degree knee flexion or quarter squats at 60 degree knee flexion three times per week for 12 weeks, results showed that the deep squat group experienced significantly greater muscle growth in their quadriceps compared to the quarter squat group. Dr. Rafael Escamea, a professor in the Department of Physical Therapy at California State University, looked at more than 70 studies on the subject of knee biomechanics during the squat. He found that bending your knees to around 90 degrees is enough to achieve very high levels of muscular activity in your quadriceps. In other words, squatting to parallel is enough to make your legs bigger and stronger. Another study from the European Journal of Applied Physiology further examined how different squat depths influenced muscle growth in the glutes and adductors. A group of young men was selected to train free barbell squats two times per week for 10 weeks. They were divided into two groups. One group trained deep squats to 140 degree knee flexion. The other trained half squats to 90 degree knee flexion. Results indicated significantly greater muscle growth in the glutes and adductors in the deep squats group compared to the half squats group. This leads us to the conclusion that deep squat between 120 and 140 degree knee flexion seems to elicit greater overall lower body muscle growth than shallow or half squats between 60 and 90 degree knee flexion. Does that mean you should squat deep? Not so fast. According to Dean Somerset, an exercise physiologist in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, there's no one right way to squat and there's no one wrong way either. It's all about finding what works for your body. In other words, there's no singular perfect textbook way that everybody should squat. And therefore, the answer to this question seems to be more individual specific and requires probing into several factors. 1. An athlete's injury history. According to Dr. Aaron Horshik from Squat University, if an athlete is injured and has knee pain, deep squats may not be his best choice. The depth of the squat must be limited to a pain-free range if he wants to stay healthy and injury-free. And two, if the athlete is injury free, then the coach should look at his anatomy and mobility. Ideally, you should squat to a depth where you can maintain at least a mostly neutral pelvic position while allowing a small amount of butt wing. In my previous video, which you can refer in the link up, I've discussed the causes of the butt wing issue and ways to address it, which I'll briefly summarize here. Individuals with shallow hip socket can easily perform deep squat without compromising their squat form. However, those with deep hip socket, which is also called Celtic hip, may not be suited for deep squatting because their femur will be restricted in motion by their pelvic bone. For those individuals, they should adjust their squat depth to do more parallel squats or try to get as low as their anatomy permits without allowing any compensation or compromise in their lumbar stability. Apart from anatomy issues, 
Poor pelvic motor control and ankle or hip mobility limitations are among other factors that may trigger buttwing and hinder your squat range of motion. These issues can be addressed with proper rehab and drill exercises, details of which you can refer to in these videos. As you see, deep squat isn't for everyone, and there are various limiting factors that must be taken into account. If you have anatomical issues such as a deep hip socket, it is recommended you do parallel squats without going any deeper to elicit greater muscle growth and strength while ensuring safety of your spine. Otherwise, you may squat deeper so long as you maintain a neutral pelvic position. Small butt wings still allowed, but not excessive. To improve your squat depth, work on addressing any mobility or motor control limitations you have with proper rehab and drill exercises as needed. Your turn now. How deep do you squat? Do you have any anatomical or mobility issues that limit your range of motion? Let me know by commenting below. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the video, please like and share, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for a complete self-educational training guide that teaches you step-by-step step how to customize your workout and meal plans using science-based methods to help you achieve the best results, please visit my website or check the video linked up. Also check my next two videos on how to address the butt wing issue and how to fix the squat bar path.